Welcome to this brief video on the Chinese herbal formula called the six-ingredient pill with Rahmania, or Liu Wei Di Huang Wan in Chinese. This is the primary formula for treating yin deficiency associated with the kidneys and the liver. It is frequently prescribed for women undergoing menopause when certain signs and symptoms can be ascribed to yin deficiency. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan has been found to be beneficial in supporting patients undergoing chemotherapy treatment. This is a mild but effective formula and is especially suitable for elderly patients. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan is an extremely important formula in Chinese medicine and it reminds us of the importance of knowing how to balance yin and yang. A common form of disequilibrium is yang excess and this often results in signs and symptoms that are treated with cold herbs. However, yang can also exceed yin when there is yin deficiency. In this case, using cold herbs would be a mistake and the practitioner should use a formula that nourishes the body's yin and jing, or essence. Chapter 74 of the Huang Di Nei Jing says the following, When the disease gets hotter after taking cold medicinals, treat yin. When the disease gets colder after taking hot medicinals, treat yang. This is known as using the same category of medicinal. Wang Bing, the famous editor of the Huang Di Nei Jing, echoes this when he says the following, Support the source of fire to diminish the darkness of yin. Strengthen the governor of water to restrain the light of yang. The formula first appears in the book, A Key to the Diagnosis and Treatment of Children's Disease Patterns, by Qian Yi, a physician from the Northern Song era, who is known as the Sage of Pediatrics. It is in fact a variation on a much older formula, Jingwei Shen Qi Wan, which appears in Zhang Zhongjing's book, Jingwei Yao Lue. In fact, Qian Yi was at first criticized for changing the classic formula. He explained to his critics that children have abundant yang qi and that they would suffer from the hot yang herbs in the original formula. In its new form, it was very suitable for yin deficiency in children showing problems in development. Its elegance and gentle supplementing nature paved the way to its use by adults. The formula is categorized as a yin tonifying formula. The formula is named after its key ingredient, Shu Di Huang, or prepared Ramania root. It means six flavor or six ingredient Ramania pill. As the name implies, the formula is usually administered in the form of pills, formed by grinding the ingredients into a powder and mixing with honey. The formula can also be administered as a decoction. This is a key formula in the Chinese pharmacopoeia, and by studying it we can learn a lot about Chinese herbal medicine. It's worth comparing this formula with another important and didactic formula, Xiao Chai Hu Tang, which is also often prescribed in menopause. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan has six herbs, as compared to the seven herbs of Xiao Chai Hu Tang. Both have a subtle, elegant logic, whereas the ingredients of Xiao Chai Hu Tang tend to have more contrasting properties. The herbs in Liu Wei Di Huang Wan have complementary properties. The action of Xiao Chai Hu Tang is focused on balancing qi. The action of Liu Wei Di Huang Wan is focused on supplementing yin and sending qi downwards. Xiao Chai Hu Tang balances the exterior and the interior, as well as balancing the raising and descending activities of qi. With yin deficiency, yang is not anchored and qi rises. To correct this, qi needs to be directed downwards. This is done with Shu Di Huang, which is a heavy herb. The downward movement is encouraged by the action of the three draining herbs. Xiao Chai Hu Tang focuses on the liver, but makes sure that the spleen and stomach are supplementing the liver in a balanced manner. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan addresses the kidneys, liver and spleen, supplementing and draining each organ, but with more emphasis on the tonification. Xiao Chai Hu Tang addresses a body in disequilibrium. A typical example of this would be menopause where the body needs to re-establish hormonal equilibrium, requiring a harmonizing formula. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan is suitable for a menopausal or postmenopausal situation, where the patient is showing more signs of deficiency. The signs and symptoms are more typical of early aging, where essence and yin need to be supplemented. To better understand the importance of this formula in traditional Chinese medicine, we can consider that the body's essence, or jing, is mainly housed in the kidneys, or shen. This is closely related to pre-heaven qi, and it is inherited from our parents. We maintain our bodies and our energy from the post-heaven qi generated by our nourishment, 
and the transforming and transporting function of the spleen, or pi, both the kidneys and the spleen contribute to our body's yin and yang. Much of our body's yin is in our blood, and the liver, or gan, is the organ that ensures the free flow of blood and qi in our body. By gently tonifying and draining these three important organs, Liu Wei Di Huang Wan ensures that they work at their best. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan is made up of six herbs. Shu Di Huang, or prepared Romani root. Shan Zhu Yu, or Asiatic Cornelian cherry fruit. Shan Yao, or Dioscorea. Zhe Xie, or Elisma. Mu Dan Pi, or the bark of Mu Tan Peony root. And Fu Ling, or Poria. Three of the herbs are viewed as supplementing, and three of the herbs are draining. Shu Di Huang, Shan Zhu Yu, and Shan Yao are seen as supplementing herbs. Zhe Xie, Mu Dan Pi and Fu Ling are the draining herbs. This slide shows typical dosage for the formula in both its pill and decoction form. Shu Di Huang has the highest dosage and is the Jun or sovereign herb. As you can see, the tonifying herbs are prescribed in higher dosage than the draining herbs. Shu Di Huang is Chinese foxglove root that is prepared by mixing with rice wine and steaming until the roots are black and moist. The herb is then dried in the sun. It has a characteristic overbaked look. The herb is sweet and moist, slightly warm in nature and very cloying. It is associated with the heart, kidney and liver channels. Shu Di Huang is classified as a herb that tonifies the blood, but it also enriches yin, generates essence and augments the marrow. The qualities of this herb have variously been described as gathering to control scattering, heavy to control ascending fire, still to control restless movement, and relaxing to control tension. It should be underlined that Shu Di Huang is a very cloying and rich substance, and can act on the body like a heavy dessert. It can aggravate dampness and impede digestion. It should be used carefully in cases of qi stagnation and excessive phlegm. Shan Zhu Yu is Asiatic Cornelian cherry fruit. Its properties are sour and slightly warm, it is associated with the liver and kidney channels. Shan Zhu Yu is said to augment the liver and the kidneys, to secure yuan or primal qi and to prevent abandonment. Shan Zhu Yu is classified as a stabilizing and binding herb, so although it's considered as one of the tonifying group of herbs in this formula, its action really supports the other two supplementing herbs by preventing the loss of essence. Shan Yao is Dias Korea or Chinese yam. It is often served as a side dish in Chinese meals. It is sweet and neutral and associated with the spleen, lungs and kidneys. Its key characteristics are that it tonifies the qi and yin of the spleen, lungs and kidneys. Like Shan Zhu Yu, it secures essence or jing. Zhe Xie is oriental water plantain or alisma rhizome. It is sweet, bland and cold, and associated with the kidneys and the bladder. This is a diuretic herb that disinhibits water and leaches out dampness. It discharges heat associated with ministerial fire, and it also clears turbidity. It should be used with caution if there is sunken qi in the middle jiao or middle burner, an assessment that is often associated with persistent diarrhea. Mudan pi is the bark of the root of Peonia lactiflora, it is acrid, bitter and slightly cold. It is associated with the heart, liver and kidney channels. Mudan Pi cools heat from either excess or deficiency. It gently invigorates blood without injuring blood or yin and clears latent fire from blood. It should be avoided if there are symptoms of cold in the blood. It should also be avoided in pregnancy or if there is excessive menstruation. Fuling or poria is a large mushroom that grows underground on the roots of red pine trees. It looks like a coconut and has a dark brown exterior and a white interior. It is important for controlling dampness in the spleen. Although you'll often see it in cubes, the great physician Zhang Xichun preferred to use it thinly sliced. 
The nature of Fu Ling is sweet, bland and neutral. It is associated with the heart, spleen, kidneys and lungs. Fu Ling leaches dampness in the spleen, thereby allowing it to efficiently transform food nutrients into qi and blood. It is mild but recognizes being effective and it is very often prescribed by Chinese physicians. It is also beneficial for the heart and helps treat insomnia. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan treats kidney yin deficiency. Its actions are to enrich the yin by nourishing the kidneys and at the same time tonifying the liver and the spleen. Most of the herbs are sweet, contributing to the tonifying nature of the formula. There is an important partnership between the strongly essence-enriching Shu Di Huang and the astringing function of Shan Zhu Yu that restricts the loss of essence. All the herbs are associated with the kidneys, but it is mainly the Shu Di Huang and Zhe Xie pair that is emphasized for this function, especially given the dosage of Shu Di Huang, Zhe Xie promotes urination to prevent fluid stagnation and to clear kidney fire. Shan Zhu Yu and Mu Dan Pi are considered the main pair of herbs acting on the liver, although Shu Di Huang and Fu Ling also contribute. Shan Zhu Yu nourishes both the liver and the kidneys to prevent the leakage of essence. Mu Dan Pi clears and drains liver fire, and its cold properties balance out the warmth of Shan Zhu Yu. Finally, Shan Yao and Fu Ling act on the spleen. Shan Yao has a stabilizing function that reinforces the production of essence. Fu Ling leaches out dampness to strengthen spleen function. Again, I think it would be useful to compare the signs and symptoms that suggest prescribing Xiao Chai Hu Tang with those specific to Liu Wei Di Huang Wan. Both formulas are used in menopause. However, the signs and symptoms for choosing the appropriate formula have to match. For a better understanding of Xiao Chai Hu Tang, please refer to my video on this formula, which is referenced in the description section below. Xiao Chai Hu Tang treats Xiaoyang syndrome, while Liu Wei Di Huang Wan treats yin deficiency. Xiao Chai Hu Tang is distinguished by alternating fever and chills, while the heat associated with yin deficiency usually results in night sweats and hot palms and soles. In Xiao Chai Hu Tang cases, Pain and fullness is experienced in the chest and hypochondriac region. In Liu Wei Di Huang Wan cases, there is soreness and weakness in the lower back. The Xiaoyang formula treats dizziness and blurred vision. In yin deficiency, there is lightheadedness or vertigo. For Xiao Chai Hu Tang, the patient is often taciturn, experiences vexation, may have low appetite or feels like retching. There may be a bitter taste in the mouth and a dry throat. In Liu Wei Di Huang Wan cases, there may be tinnitus, poor hearing, toothache, and a chronic dry sore throat. In Xiaoyang, the tongue has a thin white coating, and the pulse is wiry. With yin deficiency, there is a lack of moisture, so the tongue is red with little coating, and the pulse is thin and rapid. One of the most common side effects of chemotherapy treatment is generalized dryness throughout the body so it would be natural to consider a formula that treats yin deficiency. Liu Wei Di Huang Wan has been used for adjuvant cancer treatment, as well as a variant called Ba Xian Chang Shou Wan, or the Eight Immortal Spill for Longevity. Classically, Liu Wei Di Huang Wan has been used to treat a condition called Xiao Ke, or Wasting and Thirsting Disease, where the patient experiences thirst, hunger, frequent urination, and weight loss. This has been correlated with type 2 diabetes. Though mild, this formula should be used with caution in cases of indigestion or diarrhea due to spleen deficiency, or where there is excess dampness. I'll finish off with this summary for Liu Wei Di Huang Wan. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you'll join me for future videos in this series.